Have you ever wanted to do data analysis and don't know where to start? Or would you like to create breathtaking visualizations but don't know how to write detailed parameters for the plots? Well, ChatGPT can help you do that with just one click. I was able to generate these visualizations with ChatGPT without writing a single line of code. Amazing, right? So let's get coding. Today we will be using ChatGPT to help us do some exploratory data analysis, EDA, on police shooting dataset in Python. The dataset is available on Kaggle. I will add the link in description. Let's switch over to ChatGPT. First thing I will ask ChatGPT is that I want to do exploratory data analysis on police shootings data. And it tells me that we can use Python pandas or R's ggplot for data cleaning and visualization. As you can see here, it's telling me that I need to first obtain the data, then I need to analyze it using Python pandas, or I can also use R's ggplot to package. Right, so I will give it the location of data set, which is here. I took the data from Kaggle, and it gives me some information on how to load the data set and what visualizations I can use. That's not really what we are interested in. So I asked it to write me Python code to do the data analysis and generate some visualizations. So this is the code that it returned me. Let me copy paste this to Jupyter Notebook and let's separate this into their own code blocks. Right, so it gives me four different blocks. So the first block is loading in the data and printing us the head. The second is giving us a summary of the data set. Third is plotting a histogram. And the fourth one is plotting a bar chart. You can either download and save the shootings.csv in the same directory as your code or load it directly from my github page as csv file so i'm going to quickly save the location of the csv file in a new variable so i'm going to say log underscore file equals and this is the location to the csv file on my github page now i'm just going to add this variable here instead of the actual csv file name click on shift enter and we can see that the first five rows of data has been pulled by data dot head we will review each column in detail shortly so far so good, ChatGPT gives us describe method as well, which gives an overall idea of numeric columns like count, mean, standard deviation, and count tiles. Let me run this, and we can see that we only have two numeric columns, that is the ID column and the age column, and the describe method has given us some basic information on these two columns. Interestingly, ChatGPT has not checked the data type of all columns to see if the data types are correct, so let's ask it to give a score to check data types of columns. So I asked it how do I check data type of each column in the above data frame, so it gives me code to check that. So it's telling us that we can either use dot D types or dot info method. So let's test both out. First, I'm going to test D type. So I'm going to add two new cells here, data dot D types. Keep in mind that there's no empty parenthesis with this. Enter, and we can see the column types here. So let me add the second one as well, and then let's analyze it. Important to note that chat GPT mentions that dot info method can tell us about null values as well. Here you can see that it says that you can also use the info function, which provides data types, memory usage, and number of non-null values for each column. So as you can see here, these are the non-null values. And by the looks of it, we don't have any empty rows in our data set. I'm going to add data dot head before dot info method so we can check column types in detail while being able to see the actual data as well. So I'm going to say data dot Head. I'm just going to do two rows. I, I just want to see all of the columns. So right out of the bat, we can see that we have some of the numeric columns. So ID is integer, name is object, date is also object, which is a problem. We will deal with this very shortly. Then we have these two columns. These should be objects. This is correct. Age is right now as float. Age should ideally be an integer. So let's fix it later on. Gender, race, city, state. These are our object columns. Important to note that signs of mental illness, true and false, this is being treated as a boolean. So here it says bool, which is for boolean. Then we have two more object columns. This should be boolean as well. And then we have a category column. This is also object. All right, so we do need to change data type of few columns. So we need to convert date into date time. And we need to convert age into integer instead of float because age is supposed to be a whole number. All right, so interestingly, when we asked it to check data type of columns, it also gave us how to convert a column into different data types. So it says the data frame names, then column name, and then you type as type and then float. So the first column we need to convert is the date column. So I asked a date column of my data frame named as data. This is an object data type. I want to convert it to date format column. So it's telling me that I can use two underscore date time function from pandas to convert into a date time column. So let's do that. It also tells me that you can also pass a format as a parameter. We don't really need to format this in a specific style. So I'm going to skip this for now. We have to add a new few new rows here. So our column data frame name is data and the column name is date. So this should work. Okay, so second column we need to convert is the age column. We need this to convert into integer instead of 
float so i'm going to check from here it says this is how you can convert into a float and copy paste this here and change this to age and this should be in tier let's run this again and we will see that this should now be in date time and this should be an integer let's run this again and we can see date time and integer Keep in mind that you might have noticed earlier that ChatGPT tells us that we can convert data type using S type. So let's ask us why it's giving us a different way to convert date time instead of S type. So let's ask ChatGPT why can't we convert date time using S type. So I asked it, can we use S type to convert pandas object called date time format? So the crux of what it's telling me is that uh, the S type does not handle any exceptions. So with that is why we use two underscore date time. As you can see here, it says pd.2 date time function can handle many different date formats. It can also handle missing and malformed data in a way that is not possible using S type method. All right, these two columns are good. Let's move on. Let's run the first visualization, which is a histogram of age of individual short. Let me run it. Shift enter. So it's highest around here. It should be around from some somewhere between 25 to 23, which makes sense. So here we have the age on x-axis and frequency on the y. -axis. Second visualization we have is bar chart consisting of race of individual chart. This gives us some good insight as well. Let me run this. We have the race on the x-axis and frequency on the y-axis. Now let's ask chat GPT on how to check if our data set has null values. So I asked it how can we check if our above data set has null values. It's telling me that we have several ways to check. We can use is null and we can use is na as well. So let's test it out. All right, so this gives me a sum of empty rows from all the columns. And if I want this to be able to work on the whole data set, I will just add another sum here. And this gives me the sum of all of the empty rows in the data frame, which is zero. So it means we don't have any empty rows. We can also use is na. So I'm just going to copy paste this here, change this to is na, and we get the same result. And if I remove dot sum here, we should again get the same result, which we were getting from is null. We can also add a simple if else statement to give us a heads up if data frame has null values so we can deal with them accordingly. So what we can do is we know that this is returning as zero. So we can say if if this is greater than zero which means that we have some missing values print we have some missing values in our data frame. So next thing I want to ask it is to calculate deaths over the year and visualize it. So here I asked it for above data set I want to calculate deaths over the years and visualize it. It's telling me that we can use group by and count function to do this. So let's copy paste the code in Jupyter Notebooks and test it. We already have the data loaded. We also converted the date time. Interesting to note that it is now converting the date time. So chat GPT knows that the data set does not have this column converted to date time. So it's converting it, which is brilliant. So we are going to copy from here. I also need to copy this line as an import. Ideally, all of your imports should be at the top of your code, but this works as well. From the visual, it appears that the deaths have dropped drastically in 2020. So around 800 deaths, 400 deaths, which is a big drop. Let's try to check if we have entries for all months of 2020. We can do that by using group by with count of month and year. So I'm going to copy this from here, run it. And you see we have data for the year only. So we want to add the data for the month as well. We don't have a separate column which has the month value in it but we can use .tt.month directly within GroupBy without creating new column. Amazing, right? So here I will say, I'll take the date value and then from instead of year, I will just change it to month. So what this is doing is this is grouping by the year value and the month value. And then it, and then it takes the column which is name and then it counts it up. So let me run this and we can see that now we have the data for the year and the month as well. Now we can further filter our data set for specific years. So we know that the grouping is being done on this specific data. So if we filtered this data directly here, then the group by will use that filter data. I'm going to say data will date will year equals 2020. And then I'm just going to copy paste the rest of information. So we are effectively only telling it to do this group by on the filtered data. Let's run this and we can see that we only have 2020 data for six months. So let's say if I want to check this for 2019, we can see we have all the 12 months. This tells us that this data is only till June 2020, which explains the drastic drop in death on the above chart because we don't have all of the data for 2020. Next, we want count of deaths by age as visualization. Let me add some space here. Let me go back to chat GPT. So here I asked it what are the count of deaths by age show in visualization. It's again giving me a group by function. So let me copy paste this from here to a new cell and run it. Okay, so we see that this visualization gives an error as below. Histogram got multiple values for arguments bin. So let me get back to chat GPT and ask that we're getting an error. So I'm telling it that below code line gives an error as the error that I received. And how do I fix it? It has given me a new code. It's saying that you just need to add 
pld.hist or it's telling me that I can also do it this way. So let's try this. It's also telling me that I need to change the X label, Y label in title as well. So let me go paste this and replace this as well. Okay, let's run this. And we see that something is definitely not right with this plot because the frequency is 200 and number of deaths is in decimal value. So I asked it again and it generated me the same code for some reason it's not able to understand what the issue is so this time i asked it to use seaboard library to do count of deaths by age as visualization along with a regression line as well so it gave me this code we already have the imports we already have the data loaded in i'm just going to copy paste from here to here in a new cell and run it so we can see that the plot now looks good along with regression line which as per chat gpt the regression line represents the best fit line that explains the relationship between the number of deaths and age. It helps to understand the trend of data and the correlation between the two variables. So this seems to be correct because uh, this is making sense and in line with the above chart we did here. This one, as you can see that this value right here is speaking in age around 25, 23 to 25. And this gives us almost similar information here as well. For next visualization, I wanted to show us deaths by race summarized by year. So here I asked it, what are the shooting death by race summarized by year? This is a coded game. Me. let me copy and paste this we already have the year column in there so we don't need this as well i'm just going to copy from here to here and we can see that it gave me a correct chart let me move this ledger from here to here because we have some empty here area here so i'm going to say upper right run it again we can see this is on the right side now so this gives us some good information on number of deaths by race and year as you can also see here 2020 is half the data only till june 2020 which is why this is very low other than that the trend seems to be very similar let's take a look at data.gropy i'm going just going to copy paste this and see what it generates just out of curiosity as chat gpt uses this for grouping data okay so it generates me a grouping by year and race and then it counts up the value and if i want to remove this i am going to say unstack and it now gives me a data frame as well so if you just want to use a data frame for some other purpose you can use unstack option for our closing visualization we will ask it to visualize the state-wise shooting data on the map so i asked it please visualize the state-wise shooting data on the map and it's given me this goal which is using plotly.express to achieve this task let me copy paste all of it i'm just going to remove this line and this line because we already have it run this and it says no module name properly which is fine installing a module is very easy you click on run cmd pip install and just type in the module name click on enter and it should install it automatically okay with this install i'm just going to rerun this so we can see that this has loaded up the map here successfully so this map is generated by plotly keep in mind that we have some navigation options here so we have a soul box select etc so in a bit more and we here we have some legend as well so the yellow is the highest count and this blue one is the lowest count you can also see if once you hover over it you will see the state and the count of shootings from the looks of it the california state has the highest shootings and the lowest seems to be in this section so uh, i will wrap up this video on this visualization and as you can see chat gpt has been able to generate these visualizations very easily which otherwise would have taken a lot of time to find out all of these parameters and how to use them so i would encourage you to try out these yourself that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed the content if you did please like and subscribe and i will see you next time thank you